We know that the resistance R of a conducting wire of length L and uniform cross-section is given by this equation. The resistance equals the resistivity, which is a value based on what the wire is made from, times the wire's length divided by the wire's cross-sectional area. Now, in most cases, for the cross-sectional area, we can use pi times radius squared because the wire is assumed to be an elongated cylinder. And of course, the cross-sectional area of a cylinder is the area of a circle. So for wire A, or conductor A, which is simply a solid wire, we know that the resistance A would equal the resistivity value multiplied by the length of that wire divided by pi times the radius of that wire squared. So we've used a subscript A to denote the radius for wire A. Now conductor B is a little bit trickier. It is a hollow tube and because it's a hollow tube there is both an outside diameter and an inside diameter. So we've drawn a picture down here and this time it is a hollow tube so we've tried to draw that and to make things clearer we have drawn a side view to represent the cross-sectional area. Now the cross-sectional area is going to be the area of this sort of donut shaped region right here and to get that area and we can say this is the area for wire B or conductor B, we would have to take the area of the outer circle and subtract the area of this inner circle. So in other words, you would have pi multiplied by the outer radius squared minus pi multiplied by the inner radius squared. So that would give you the area of that yellow donut shaped region. So now we can begin to write out the equation for the resistance of conductor B. It would be the resistivity times the length divided by its cross-sectional area, which we just derived, pi outer radius squared minus pi times inner radius squared. If you're wondering why we don't put subscripts on the resistivity value and the length, that is because the question noted that the conductors are made of the same material and they have the same length. So there would be no need to use subscripts of A for conductor A and subscripts B for conductor B because that would indicate that the values are different in some way, but they're not. They're actually the same. So we'll just use rho and L for the resistivity and length of both of these conductors. Now the question wants the ratio RA divided by RB. So we're going to take this value for RA that we derived and put that over this value for RB that we derived. So it will look like the following. We'll have RA over RB. And again, RA was rho times length divided by pi times the radius of wire A squared. And then you're going to divide that by this quantity right here. So rho L over pi outer radius squared minus pi inner radius squared. This is a complex fraction. We can do what I like to call keep, change, flip. So you're going to keep this first fraction in the same orientation. So rho L over par R sub A squared. You're going to change division to multiplication and then you're going to flip this fraction upside down essentially. So you'll have pi outer radius squared minus pi times inner radius squared and that will be all divided by rho L. Now we stated that the quantity quantities, rho and L, are the same in both cases, so these can cancel out. And in the numerator up here, you can actually factor out a pi. So you'll have pi, parentheses, outer radius squared minus inner radius squared. Close off the parentheses and then divide that by the denominator, which is pi times the radius of conductor A squared. Of course, the pi's cancel, and now you're left with just the quantity r sub O squared minus r sub I squared divided by r sub a squared. So we can just plug in the known values at this point. And there's also no need to convert the quantities from millimeters into meters because the units would cancel anyways in a ratio. So in fact, these values are diameters rather than radii. So we do have to be careful about converting the diameters into radii. So for conductor A, we know that we can take the diameter and divide that by two. And so we'll take the diameter of one millimeter and divide that by two. And that's going to give us obviously 0.5 millimeters. And then we'll do the same things for the outer radius. We'll take the diameter 
and divide that by two. So that was two millimeters divided by two, which will give me one millimeter. And then finally, the inner radius of conductor B will be the inner diameter divided by two. The inner diameter was one millimeter. Divide that by two, you'll get half of a millimeter. So basically the quantities are half a millimeter, except for R sub O, which is one. So let's go ahead and plug those in. So we'll have one millimeter squared minus half of a millimeter squared divided by half of a millimeter squared. And when you work this out, you will end up with three. So this would be the correct answer for the ratio of the resistance of conductor A to the resistance of conductor B.